Hello, peas in a pod, and uh, no, we're peas in a pod. Well, are we? <laughs> Hello <laughs> from peas in a pod. Yes, it's good to be back. It is. It is. It's, um, yeah, it's week after Easter, isn't it? It's what, 24th, is it, Dan? 23rd uh, today. 23rd of April. It's, uh, I'm hoping you're going to pick us up loud and clear because it's not far off blowing a gale at the minute down here, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, you had a good week, Dan? Yeah, it's not been bad. Uh, getting a bit done, like getting yeah. guarded, a lot of stuff planted up, what we can. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we don't get any frosts. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a good week. Yeah, I had a look, and uh, I think we're pretty frost free this week looking at night temperatures. Like, Loist I've seen for next week's about six, so hopefully, it should be all right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, right, today we're going to look at oh, a couple of things before we uh, get going. We're going to look at the 20 pound challenge bed, which is just over there. Um, we saw some veg seed direct. Sowing direct is going to be a, a bit of a laugh in this wind, but we'll have a go. Um, uh, some onion sets to put in. Then, like I said, I don't grow veg without flowers. So I've got some half hardy annuals, uh, sorry, hardy annual seed to sow. Uh, we were going to do roses, but I think it's going to be a bit much to give it justice to do it all in 20 minutes so we're going to film roses tomorrow and hopefully get that out in week yeah get that out yep. about wednesday winter yep uh and heads up we're doing a live phone in half past 10 while 11 tomorrow but you do have to be a part of our facebook group to uh to watch it or you know send a question in or something like you know anything like that so that's first ones tomorrow isn't it and then it's going to be yeah. it's an ongoing thing so it'll be every every second Sunday so every two weeks yeah yeah oh one final thing before we go to it Dan you know uh, when we mentioned the uh, bed challenge last week and I bought the garden veg magazine yeah and I, I said I could have done with a bit of cabbage seed yes and you said well if you ask somebody around here I'm sure the good people I'm sure they'll offer you a bit of cabbage seed yeah well since we did that unbelievably I think there's been five or six people offered me cabbage seed yeah yeah so I just want to say, Dan, I really like John Smith's. <laughs> <laughs> Probably to get on with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Let's right. get on. See you in a minute. Hi, here we are over at bed two. Uh, this is what got chosen for the 20 pound challenge so how do you feel about drawing this bed martin um i've got reservations about the first two things i'm going to plant to be honest with you on here uh, one is carrots because I, i've swapped varieties i'll say more about that as i'm sorry now. i did obviously i didn't know about the bed or any of this challenge and this was manured this winter so yeah to be right, you don't want to be putting carrots in the bed you've no. it, it'll cost forty. So you're getting the old that's life type carrots, which you, you don't really want. They are perfectly edible all the same though, but you don't really want. Um, the onions, these are probably the two the two things I'm going to put in now, the two I'm going to be least confident about in, in this bed. And, we onions, it's main reason because we have a lot of white rot. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't discovered which beds I've got it in and which I haven't yet. So I've only been here two years. I do a bed. I tried some onions, some red onions in last year. I think it was bed 11, and they were just a total wipe out of disaster. Yeah. But we're going to have a try. Bed three outside of me. That's an all lovely fresh. Cause if you think back, I don't if I did mention when I took this allotment on it, well basically they're all full of waste compost and yeah, it yeah. was just it was just um, like dust. So I've been improving the beds as I've gone. This has had some topsoil, John in this and some of my own compost added. Uh, I'm quite sure carrots would have grown lovely in there, you know. I may even try a row just to see in here. Yeah. So we'll see Dan. But uh yeah, it's look of the drawer, isn't it? So yeah, it could have been worse because I think it's bed 11 that I've, I've done absolutely nothing to. That's just clay soil, which is over there, just down the, the shallow bed, you know, the single tiered one. Yeah. So, right then, Dan. 
20 pound challenge. Up to press, I've spent a tenner, so I'm halfway there with spending. Yeah. So I bought some onion sets. Um, tonight, then, I'm going to sow a row of carrots, some onion sets at the side, and some more hardy and I'll have to stop saying that, hardy annuals. You know, it's that many years since I've grown all the annuals that I can't get out of saying half all these because we grow bedding plants all the time. And some all the annuals into there. The first thing you'll notice is I haven't had planning permission for a bungalow. <laughs> but we've gone old school. I put these in it week. It's a bit Harry Dobson. What I've done after a row of house bricks in. Danny's going to say, what you put a row of house bricks in for, Martin? Why is there a row of house bricks in your bed, Martin? Exactly. Because the clay, these will absorb heat when the sun's on them, because this is a nice south facing bed, which we try to get as bed south facing to get as much heat from the sun and as much daylight. And then, as the temperature's cool, we're going to night time, we'll convey the heat from the bricks into the soil, which in theory, just keep my little drill with my uh, seedlings in, just to touch warmer. So hopefully that will help. Yeah. germination. So I suppose you could, if you've got some masonry paint, some black masonry paint, you could paint these black to help? Yeah, yeah, I mean that, that definitely would help. I mean, you know my thoughts on black, all the beds are painted black, yeah. all the greenhouses are black. That will help. So, right, the first thing we're going to do then, we're going to sow a row of carrots. It's, uh, it's about right time now to begin carrots in. Simple as, I've just set, I just give this bed a bit of a rake and a smooth over this morning, nothing too elaborate. And I did give it uh, two cans of water. From there to sort of where that is, it's been watered. But I will water again once the seedlings are in. Right, to make a drill, you can make a drill is where we sow our seeds into. People use the back of their hands, they use corner of an oar, they use a rake, any method that you'll find best. I'll use a cane. Just cut it down so it nicely fits my bed. I'm going to follow that line so it's all nicely, uh, all nicely uniform and in line. And just press on it firmly all the way along. Lift that out. I don't know if you'll pick it up on camera. And just if you see anywhere where it hasn't quite made a good enough indentation, looking for it to all be even, even depth. There we go, hopefully you can pick that up. I don't know if that will help if I put my hand over uh, to it. So, so there you go. That's as simple as it is, that's a drill made. Direct sowing. Why Why do we sow as vegetables in this, well, not so much as flowers, as vegetables like this? Why do we do them in a row, Don? Any ideas? I don't really know. Because weeds don't grow in rows. Do they not? No. So we know. Once we start seeing a lot of very similar looking seed leaves along here, yeah. that's where his row of veggies. And also, of course, which I will do, we'll put a marker a in. Marker. Just there, lets us know where his drill is. So we know where we're watering. We know what to weed out and what to leave. Yep. I swap you carrot seed in tight with F1 Camilla. Yes. Which were a long taproot carrot. Yeah. I didn't want that because like I say, it's a manure bed, so I just want a shallow growing stump root carrot. Or basically, I want to try and get a crop. Now, this variety of carrots is early Nantes. It's early Nantes too. They've gone out to about early Nantes 6 or 7, I think, as they've improved the strain. This is early Nantes too. Something I want to get across to people. Um, which, something I picked up, and I think it is really worth taking note of, especially if you're doing this in a small garden, a back garden, this is what you've got. You want to maximise your yield out of these. You know, if you're trying to be self-sufficient, trying to keep them food bills down. That might sound not very important, but that is very vitally important for that. That's the word early. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Anything that's an early crop is a short season crop. You'll be able to sow it again. Yeah. So to contradict myself, or like nature's a contradiction, I saw these and I've got a crop off these end of June, I can go again. Yeah. Don't chuck your seed away what's left or give it to your friend or give it away. Keep hold of it, you can put another crop in. They're a short week, they're a short day crop. Basically, you've got short day plants and long day plants. Your long day plants are when you're coming into the summer, they need that 12 hours or more of daylight 
that what makes them a lot need a longer season to grow. These early varieties, they don't need that length of time. Thereby, you get more crops. So instead of having one crop of carrots, you can get two, maybe three. Same principle with potatoes, what we planted last time. I put rocket in. They're one of the very first early rockets. The rocket seed potatoes I've got left over, I didn't disregard them, I saved them. When I harvest them rockets in them buckets, I'll riddle that compost through and I'll put them rockets straight back in straight back. and we'll get another crop. It's them early crops that yeah. you can do that with. Does that make sense to you, Dad? It does to me. Beautiful. Right, so the normal way I'll sow these into direct soil is like to put some in my hand, actually pick the seed up and see where, see where we're at. But Ah, uh, this is blowing today, it, it, it'd be over there, you know, it'd be in Parkgate, which won't mean a lot to most people, but <laughs> it'd be far, far away. So quite a small seed, carrot seed. You get 100 or so in a packet. The main things we have problems with is with carrots, because everything has its pests and its diseases. I'm just going to stand on the bed, Dan. This carrot fly. So, linking into that. That's it, they're coming. What I'm trying to do is sow these as thinly as possible. What do I mean by thinly? <coughs> Excuse me, it's to try and leave some space between the seeds. The reason especially why I want to do this with carrot is because carrot flies are attracted to the scent of the carrots. So I don't want to have to be what we call thinning out, that's picking plants out. Yeah. Because I can release that scent then, I can attract them. So I'm trying to sow as thinly as I can. If you do over sow them, so put too many in, the thing to do is don't be thinning out in the middle of the day, that's when they're the most active, when it's warmest. Do it early in the morning, or like going into this time of an evening. Yeah, yeah. And that can help avoid carrot fly. So that's they're in the drill. All I'm going to do, back in my hand. Not a lot of so. Remember, they're very fine seed. I just want to cover it, and then I'm just going to tamp that. No, I'm not laying tarmac. I'm not going to go mad. But if you remember when we were sowing a few seeds in the greenhouse, what I said to you is consolidation is vital. That seed needs to be in contact with the soil. And like I say, this isn't ideal. So carrots do like a sandy soil. You know, that's why you see fields of carrots in Lincolnshire. Yeah. So that's the carrots and we will water them in due course. So nice and close to them bricks, try and get that bit of heating. Once the fruit course you can take these out, you know, once they're up and active and they're going. So, I've never grown these before. Well, I have grown onions before, but <laughs> these white ones, are, it's a new variety called Sweet Art. So, I'm going to have it on yeah, give it a go. Right, bulb onion, uh, onion sets. What I'll do is, I'll just put that there. I'm going to be very tight with my spacings because like I say, we're trying to maximise yields, we're trying to get as much as we can for as £20. So I'm going to go grow things as tight as what I can. So good onion set, what to look for, or what not to look for. Right, one here. Anything like that, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, feed birds with it. We don't Straight want them. Yep. Nice, big, fat, healthy. The cubby to green showing at the top. There's your roots at the bottom, they're what we after, yep, they're what we after, the onion sets. The way these are produced is these onions are sown in the middle of summer, then they're stopped in the autumn, yeah, yeah. which are at that size, then they're put into dormancy through the winter, so they can come again in the spring. Yeah. It just saves us all that sowing from Obviously. seed and trying to get them going, yeah, so all right. All I'm doing, Dan, making an hole with my finger. Obviously, if you don't want to use your fingers, 
Lose your thumb. I normally would use, you know, the blade of my trowel. Yes. Just for marking out, but I haven't got it with me, so I need something just so I'm spacing them. Uh, spacing what we got? Them what like. we got? What we got? What we got? Don't got a stick? <laughs> we have. I'll, I'll do it behind. It'll be right. Do it behind. It'll be right. So, is there any reason that you chose to put onions in outside of your carrots? Or? Yeah, there is actually. Again, I'll we'll straighten this stick up, then I'll end up a uh, real wonky row. Nobody wants a wonky row. Um, yeah. Like I said, the carrot fly is attracted by scent. Yeah. And they do say that the onions can mask the scent of the carrots, so it's helping again. Yeah. You know, it's all that old, uh, like we did with the slugs on the potatoes, it's all that old saying again, prevention is better than cure. You can find a way to stop a problem before it starts. It's better for you and you're going to get better crops for it. The results are going to be better. So we'll, uh, let's finish this row. I think we'll... Uh, I'm not put do two rows on camera, but we'll do a double row of these, Dad. Yeah. Just like I say, uh, we do get a few problems with white rot, which is a disease that affects the root of onions. The way to tell it is uh, your onions will be growing quite healthily, then they'll just flop on you, or when you come to lift your onions, there's just nothing at the bottom. Yeah, mush. Mush, yeah. And again, it's quite a, a problem because it can stop in your beds for up to seven years. So you've got to look at growing onions either in containers somewhere else or refer from growing them real. So what we got there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten onions in there. Another one, twenty onions, a fair wind, decent onions, we'll get a crop off then. Uh, if you can just move that mic up. I'm going to water these in, like I said, but has been watered this morning. You want a fine rose. A fine rose means plenty of those little holes in the washing can. If you get the two bigger holes in the rows, it'll wash your seeds out. One of my little quick tips, when you start watering and you're going to walk to some seedlings in, never start watering on the seedlings. Now, water at the edge of the bed first so you've got your rows going. So you ain't got that splash at first. That's um, what could be simpler. It's there, it's done. I will put a bit of fleece over these, not so much to protect them from cold nights, because we're not looking too bad on that, but I do know from experience, birds love to pull these up. They absolutely seem to love pulling an onion set up. You see that little bit of green and they're off. <laughs> you end up bringing them back in and right, so that's carrots in. Basically for the rest of the seed, I'll sow some more this week, we're just following the same. The width, the distance between each row, I will give it a trowel. That yeah. is usually my go-to measurement when doing these. So you can do your cabbages the same, straight from seed, your lettuces, radishes, turnips, pretty much everything really, straight from seed. Like I say, keep your sowing spin, when you haven't got that, as much of that thinning out to do, you get strong out for your plants. But we'll be coming back to this quite a lot, to this bed. Right, and like I said, Dan, I like my flowers. Now then, all the annuals, Dan, I've grown these for a long, long time. A great way to get some colour in your garden, and to do it cheaply. These are, I think these were £2, £2.25, Dan. That lot. Mm. We've got all sorts in here, all the annuals. There's cornflowers, there's uh, poppies, I think there's some love in a mist, nigella. Uh, I think there's clarkias in here, gadishas are in here, there's a wide range. Um, good for using for cut flowers as well, Dan, which is something we'll be getting to yeah. next week, hopefully. Right, so, slight difference here, Dan, what we want when we're growing flowers is, unless you're doing it for an actual cut, cutting the flowers, if you want to do them as a display, as a flower bed, flower border, 
We don't want to be sowing in rows because nature doesn't grow in rows, it doesn't look natural. So what I've done is I've just done loads of little little rows, little um, indentations at all different sorts of angles to try and give it that natural look. Intercrossing, so one crosses another. When we used to do big beds, which you don't see now with all the annuals, we mark them out in sand, you know, like in, in drifts yeah. and so like that. <coughs> Excuse me, but obviously uh, this is quite a tight space. I don't want to give much of this bed away because we are doing it for a reason. So I'm just going to go into here with them. Can you get in on them, Dan? Lovely, weird, and wonderful shape <laughs> seed there. And bits of all sorts. One spell in there straight away. So, yeah, there we go. Free and easy with these. It's keeping them low. I know you might not catch it, but like I say, it is blowing here. Filling all these little uh, little drills up what I've made. If a few drop and scatter, no problems with that whatsoever. It just adds more to the, the natural look of it. And I'd say there's probably three, four hundred seed in here. Yeah, but they're all damn full there, Dan. Yep. I'm just going to broadcast them now. Broadcasting basically is if you could imagine like you putting your grass seed on. If you if you direct sowing, basically doing it in a row, you're keeping it all uniform. You're broadcasting, you're just spreading it about basically. Again, that consolidation is vital, making sure that seeds are in contact with soil. Can't germinate if the seeds are in an air pocket. to that then we don't grow plastic. We'll try not to anyway. Again I'll just put a bit of fleece over this. I have found uh, it does help with with these kind of sowings, uh, same when I've been reseeding with grass, just covering them with that bit of fleece, you know that pound of meter stuff what yeah. we use in greenhouses does seem to help get them through. Yeah. And it does keep, you know, cats and birds off and such. So yeah, I'm going to give them some water. We're not too bothered about if these seeds move about, because we've broadcast them. You know, it's, we're getting that natural effect with them. Nice old water. Just go again over my carrots and onions. This water will help consolidate them as well, that'll bind them. We'll get that other stick. That in with my onions, and that's uh, that's the first three pounds we've gone in the old uh, twenty pound challenge bed done. It's a start. Just out of interest, I'm halfway through my savings. We ain't like I said, I've spent a tenner, but we've got flowers. Obviously, we've got carrots, we've got onions, we've got cabbages, we've got kale, we've got beetroot. Yep. We'll have tomatoes, and we've got various other things I can't think of off the top of my head. So we're getting a good larder built up here yeah, already. Yeah, definitely. And we've quite still a bit got from. we've still got ten pound that yeah. I mean you can waste on some, haven't we? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because what I will do is I'll put some spring flowers in later on in season. Yeah. And there's winter veg. Yeah. So there's all that to come cool. as well. But obviously, we're going to get as much eating out of this as we can. One quick one, Dan, because I always like to do a, do a quick one before we move on. Right, I put that row of onions in, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah all right. And I'm going to come back um, tomorrow, one day this week, put a row in there. I think I will put some lettuce in. Yeah. So I'm going to put another row of onions in and I'm going to go a row of lettuce. That gap I've left, I'll put a row of radishes in. Yeah. That's the quick... Quick germination. Quick maturing, yeah. And what that is called is a catch crop. Yeah. So when you've got like your onions, which you'll be looking to at August time to be harvesting, your carrots round about well early nants, perhaps you know oh, July, early July, all being well. So I can get away with a, quack, a catch crop in between them without hurting anything. One thing, a couple of things I should have mentioned with the onions as well to keep them well watered. Onions like water; they like nitrogen. Tip: Don't weed onions with an awl. 
now. Pull them out. With, if you've got onions, detest weeds. They don't like the competition. But when you start getting weed seeding, as much as you can, and weed it with onions because they're very fibrous rooted and they're very near the surface. So you can quite easily chop through a lot of them roots with them. Yeah. yeah. You never take a no to an onion. That's how we were learnt it, or how we to remember it. You always have weed them. A good tip. Right. Um, oh, but to just show the way we do carrots, Dan. Yeah, you know, we'll uh, give him a show. Yep. Right, so. Like we said at the beginning, our soil isn't really suited to growing onions. We haven't, we've got clay soil. We haven't got that lovely sandy loam that like you do get in Lincolnshire and Cambridgeshire and them sort of places. So what we do is, especially for us showing us carrots, because we more or less show all of them out, we have to think up ways of doing it. So we build one of these. What we call carrot boxes. So, go to this, uh, all this frame just lifts up, it's on an inch, like that. This is all Enviromesh, which um, carrot fly can't penetrate, can't get through, we put the lid on it. But this is all sand, I think it was a ton of sand, we had two tons of sand in yeah. here, didn't we Dan? And each of these little collars, as these will be sown this week, these have got um, clover seed and module in. Yeah, I'll put that back. And then I'll be sowing my seeds. I'll put two to a station in there this week. I'll just uh, finally riddle a bit of vermiculite or fine compost over the top, start watering them. That's how we protect them. Because again, we're doing them, they're not actually growing in the sand, they are growing in seed compost, you know, in a seed and module compost. Yeah. But you've got that pull of the water, you know, it's pulling that water out, you know, that drainage capacity of sand. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we do that. And obviously that touch wood, that gives you nice long thin carrots, you know, what yeah, look yeah. like a carrot should do. Yep. And that's a, a job we'll be getting on with this week. Yep. Right, so, I hope you uh, caught most of that, because I say it is blowing a bit here. And uh, I hope it was some use to you. But uh, any comments or tips or the way you do it, please leave it below. Come and join us Facebook, you know that we do quite a bit of stuff on Facebook, what we don't do on YouTube, we do do short videos, 5-10 minutes, and we have got the old garden dancer phone. Yeah, right? yeah, where we go live, which is every other Sunday. Starting tomorrow, or today, depending on when you're watching it, well, this or is yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Sunday at half past 10 while 11, isn't half it? Half 10 while 11, yeah. Yep, um, what, and heads up what we're doing, so, and, next episode's done? Uh, yeah, so next episode we said we're gonna, which is going out Wednesday, yep. uh, we said we were going to be doing the rose, showing how to plant roses. Right, yeah, yeah. So we'll get that in, we'll get that filmed and sorted out tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, hopefully this wind will have dropped. Um, we're going to plant a couple of roses, an hybrid tea and a floribunda. So we'll do that. A few hints and tips on planting roses. One or two things if you're really into roses that are worth knowing. And then uh, next Saturday, which will be at Saturday night or Sunday, we will be having a bit of a catch up, looking yep. back at how some of the stuff's coming on. The peat versus peat free peat challenge, we could, we've had results of that, which won't surprise many people, but we'll go back on that. And uh, I think we're going to bring, are we bringing the third member of the team on? Yeah, we've uh, discussed that, so. Uh, uh, She'll be making up in here. Yeah, she will. Yeah, the missing, uh, the missing member. If you like, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll bring Kirst on next week. Then she's got one or two things in pipeline and what she's interested in. She's really interested in doing a cut flower bed. Yeah. She hasn't done it before, so we're gonna have a look at that with her or have a chat about that and one or two other things. So yeah, I hope you all have a have a good week and keep at it. And yeah, it's a really it's a real bottleneck month this month, it's a real month to be getting stuff done. That's it, big right. turnaround. Big turnaround, that's the one done. Right, right. see you next week then. See you later. Thank you.